There is no place I'd rather be Than an and will I by the sea A little place I'll always want to be Here in Anguilla by the sea A-N-G-U-I-L-L-A A-N-G-U-I-L-L-A I am Sarah Greaves Gabadon, but a lot of people know me by my brand name, which is Jet Set Sarah. And really, Jet Set Sarah is all about sharing the Caribbean and the world with other people. I am a real life, not just a blogger, but actually a travel writer. I contribute to outlets like Travel and Leisure and Condé Nast Traveler. But under my own brand, Jet Set Sarah, that's my opportunity to share the world through my eyes. So there's lots of shopping, there's lots of culture, there's lots of food, and there's lots of color. I love Anguilla because it is posh, but not pretentious. You know, I have tons of suggestions for a first time at Anguilla. And the first one would be, you gotta hit the beach. My favorite of the 33 of them is actually Mondays Bay, which is the beach at Cap Luca. You must put your toes in the sand on Mondays Bay. It is unbelievable. You feel as if you have stepped into an Instagram photo with tons of filtering, except it's hashtag beautiful, hashtag no filter. Another one of my favorite things to do, I mean, Anguilla is a beautiful island on its own, but there are some offshore islands not far away that really are worth seeing. One of my favorites is Sandy Island, which is a little oasis that you can see if you are at Sandy Ground. It's just on the horizon. I think it's about 10 minutes away by boat. The boat that brings you over, they have names like happiness and bliss. And trust me, that's exactly what you're gonna feel when you get to Sandy Island. Great crayfish, because of course you have to have and William Crayfish when you come here. Um, one of the things that I really enjoy about Anguilla is the fact that there's Wi-Fi everywhere. Whether you're at a beach bar, whether you're inside in a fancy restaurant, nine times out of 10, there's Wi-Fi. It's free, it's fast, it's open. So you can share your trip with everyone and hopefully make them just a little bit jealous too. Well, you know, I travel the world, but really I live on Instagram. So wherever I'm in the world, you can find me there at Jet Set Sarah. I also have a sort of OOTD and style feed called Jet Set Shops, where I show off the outfit, outfits that I'm wearing and I show off the things I bought on my travels. I also have a website, jetsetsarah.com. I'm on Twitter at Jet Set Sarah. And uh, I bet you won't guess what I am on Facebook, facebook.com slash Jet Set Sarah. Hi, my name is Rizal. I'm also known as the Traveling Island Girl. I'm a content creator and Caribbean travel writer. Traveling from St. Martin to Anguilla is always an exciting trip that can involve at least three modes of transportation for many. Upon arrival at the Princess Juliana International Airport in St. Martin, you will meet the representative of the private boat charter right outside the arrival hall. They will be holding a sign with the name of the company so you cannot miss them. In my case, my boat company of choice is Calypso Boat Charters. From the airport, you are quickly whisked away on a comfortable luxury van to the docks, which are literally across the airport. Once there, you can leave your bags with a baggage handler before being escorted to the check-in area, where you will present your passport and fill out the immigration form with a friendly representative at a counter. And once you clear the St. Martin immigration, it's a short wait in the designating waiting area until the boat's arrival. From there, it's an easy transfer with professional assistance in one of Calypso's spacious boats and capable captain. The ride over is just 20 to 30 minutes. Upon your arrival to beautiful Anguilla, you go through the due immigration process and before you know it, you will be collecting your bag and heading outside to meet your friendly taxi driver who will take you to your destination of choice. Welcome to Anguilla.
Hey, we're here in Sandy Ground, one of my favorite beaches for children in Anguilla. It's also the beach I grew up on, so it's partial to my heart. I love it because the water is calm and shallow. It's super kid friendly. There's lots of local culture down here, but my personal favorite, Roy's Bayside Grill. On a Saturday, they've got a $5 kids meal and you really can't beat that when you're going to the beach with your children in Anguilla. Scarlett loves it, I love it too. We're here on Shoal Bay East, one of my favorite beaches to take your kids to. I love this beach for older children because there's fantastic snorkeling. It's right off the shoreline. You just swim out to any of our reefs and you're going to see a plethora of Anguilla's aquatic life. Nestled between two cliffs, this beach is a great pick for children because it's almost never rough. My kids are also entertained by the ability to search for unique rocks and shells along the shore. It wouldn't be a Caribbean island without a quaint fishing village, and Island Harbor doesn't disappoint. My young son loves when we visit this beach because he always learns a thing or two by hanging out on the wharf with the local fishermen. The beach itself is shallow and calm, which is perfect for budding swimmers. There are several great eateries with casual menus that any child will love. Meads Bay is by far the best option for teens or older kids. There's opportunities to rent banana boats, go tubing or paddleboard when you choose this beach for the day. Anguilla has a beach for every square mile, so chances are you may make your own list of favorites while you're here. Connect with me on Instagram at the only Vanessa to share yours. In this first episode of True Anguilla TV, we catch up with some of the special people we have interviewed over the years and find out what's changed for them and how the pandemic is treating them so far. Look at this. <laughs> how much weight have you lost? 98 pounds, I think it would be. I was 278 pounds in this picture, people. I'm now 185, so you do the math, can I tell you? This pandemic has changed a lot. Two years has gone like that, I can't believe it. I've seen things and heard, heard stuff that I've never heard before in my life. I didn't even know what repatriation was, didn't know the word. And I've seen a lot of virtual stuff. I didn't know that Anguillans and people alike were so talented, my God. 2016, I believe. Okay. 2016, correct. Oh, I've seen the entrepreneurial spirit be alive and well. It is so good to see that because Anguillians were always very entrepreneurial. We had people who went to Australia to buy vehicles and rock crushers and heavy equipment and these things, you know, back in the 60s and 70s, there were no internet. They would communicate by telex and these type of things, go to cable and wireless in Angola with quarters and call for your payphone. And I'm seeing that spirit again because people lost jobs, people were for load, people were home on sabbatical. You had to find a way to earn a living and a lot of businesses were born out of this, which was really, really good. In 2015. You went way back in the archives <laughs> shooting for this one. I know. Yeah. <laughs> we look young Amazing. Now, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> My pandemic was a growth opportunity. Um, it was a time when we realized that we would not be having our regular business. And so I had to put on my creative hat and I pitched an idea to um, government and to tourism that uh, Blue Sea Anguilla would provide a white glove concierge service uh, to all the applicants who 
were applying to come to Anguilla when the borders reopened. They agreed, and so for the next eight months, uh, Blue Sea Anguilla was otherwise known as Diane, the <laughs> beloved Diane on the Anguilla portal. When the portal reopened, it was under uh, government management and a, a very different system. So we, Diane was retired at that point, but it was a great opportunity to connect with our visitors and connect with the industry because, you know, there was a lot of hand-holding through that process. You know, it, it really took me off into a tangent that I never expected. I think also it gave Mimi an opportunity. She's such a go-getter, such a hands-on person, and I think it gave her an opportunity to um, really um, realize that, you know, together we are stronger. Absolutely. Well said, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all want the same thing. I mean, like for everybody, I mean, it's been quite a challenge. I mean, for the past two years, we've been forced to do things which I think in human history, uh, definitely in recent human history, we haven't done before. I mean, having to stay home, isolate, having to, to really not be able to have the freedom that we kind of had in the past. So especially in the, the era of music, um, we weren't able to congregate in large crowds. And I think that has had a, a significant impact on not just music here in Anguilla, but music across the world. During the pandemic, I released uh, three singles and three music videos. Did a lot of writing. I went to a period where I've, rec I rec I've recorded, I would say, even at home, because I actually started to set up a, a home studio during the start of the pandemic. Um, and I recorded about, I would say, at least over nine, ten songs. So I've got actually songs for a full album. But in mid-course of that, I decided to go a different direction. I'm creating an album more organic, more expressive. Yeah, I think gave gave me a bit of an opportunity as well to, to kind of scale back, sit down. In, in Anguilla, we are blessed to have the water, the, the, the sunshine, and I'm um, lovely weather 365 days a, a year, barring a hurricane. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so I just was, I've been able to, to just to enjoy life for what it is, appreciate music, and appreciate um, everything in spite of everything that's going on. Something amazing is cooking in Anguilla. Introducing the Caribbean's newest Epicurean festival, the Anguilla Culinary Experience. This May, chefs from around the world join local chefs to showcase why Anguilla is the culinary capital of the Caribbean. Celebrate life with good friends enjoying inspired food that blends the island's rich tradition and the freshest ingredients with international flair. Enjoy five days of curated experiences at the island's world-class resorts, villas and restaurants. Intimate dinners with star chefs, on the beach barbecue and music-filled parties. Ceviche making with fresh caught fish. Harvest salt from a natural salt pond or sample the finest rums. A portion of your ticket will support education for Anguilla's next generation of chefs. Visit anguillaculinaryexperience.com to reserve your place at the table.
I first lived down here, I became enamored with cooking with the local charcoal. They make keels with the local wood, sea grape, white cedar, pressure. And I was always enamored about how you can do that because it's a different way of cooking. So when I came back to Anguilla about eight years ago, I always had in the mind set up a restaurant to do this kind of cuisine. So I did my research and then I set that up to do the cooking that we wanted to do right here using local ingredients and seasonal ingredients cooked over embers, which people ask me all the time, what is ember? Embers, when you start a fire, traditionally not supposed to really cook over that hot fire because you can scorch fruit beets or burn things. But when it gets down to the embers, that's when it becomes the time and the slowness of cooking and it parts the flavor into the food. I'm encouraged to see some of the guys that I worked with in the early days of Straw Hats went on to become chefs of their own and run rich kitchens and stuff. I trained a lot of people. You know, as a first and foremost, I'm a teacher as being a chef and I like sharing my knowledge. And I've worked for some really great chefs and you know, over you know, 35 years of cooking, I wanna be able to pass that knowledge along. Come down here, you can't be. May is a beautiful time in the month of the year. The weather's just about right. The sea's nice and warm. You have beautiful restaurants. Everybody's done with the most of the season. So everybody's in a relaxed mode. There's a lot going on. I said, you get some great restaurants, some great experiences to do. And if people who don't want the crowded beaches, like on high season and stuff, you have pretty much, you have Anguilla to yourself, and it is the true paradise that it is. The first thing I do when someone comes to me is I want to find out what their requirements are and what their dreams and their wishes are. And then you try to get as many of those as you can. But you really have to listen carefully to what they're saying because they're giving you a lot of feedback that they don't realize they're giving you. When they say they, you know, they like to see the sunset or they like the view of St. Martin. All of those are key things that you need, but you need all of those little things to add up. Buying real estate is not just a money investment, it's an emotional investment. When people walk into a home, they usually have an immediate reaction, positive or negative, whether, oh, this just feels right, or no, I don't like this at all. The people that come to Anguilla are very adventuresome. They are looking for something different from the way they live now. It's evolving somewhat. It typically had been people in their 60s, but now we're getting younger clients, and they can be from their late 30s to their mid 50s, and they realize they can work from anywhere. So they're looking for a place that they can let their children grow up and be a part of all the memories and then that they can go and still work and relax at the same time. I've actually put together an ebook on how to buy real estate on Anguilla and in that it has a step-by-step -step on everything that you have to do to buy real estate. They're a little overwhelmed by the differences in the process because it is different but it's my job to show them how simple a process it truly is and to walk through it with them. This property is called Villa Bramasol and it was built in the early 1990s. And it's listed for 1.75 million. And after Irma, they pulled up the pool completely. They redid it in the nice darker color. They added an outside sitting area that's very comfortable. They completely redid everything. And it's a very comfortable, true Caribbean style house. The world won't go around unless there's insurance, right? There's banks that require it, there's people that have risk, they need insurance. So if I can give them a product that they feel comfortable with, then I feel rewarded. Irma occurred in September. We had finished paying claims out on all but two policies by the end of December. We were intent on getting people paid out, but also making sure that they got the right payout and that they were satisfied. You want to make sure that you're covered.
Hey friends, welcome to What's Fresh, where we share all the latest on entertainment, business, trends, and all the need to know on the island. Begin your weekend with a welcoming ritual of yoga by the beach with Sami. A perfect stress relief and relaxation technique that allows you to transcend and diffuse negative energy. Contact Anguilla Yoga for more information on Sami's classes. If you are a beach person, then Aqua Escape should be on your speed dial. With these handy scooters, you can explore the beautiful oceans of Anguilla a lot easier. Book with your concierge or contact Travis directly. If you're looking for a variety of local cuisine, then Epic Foods is the way to go. Check out their social media posts for their tasty and affordable daily menus and delivery options. Already blessed just eat. Speaking about delivery, Food is not the only thing that can be delivered to you. We have Rodney coming in to the rescue to bring you a wide selection of Cuban and other premium cigars, so you don't have to lift a finger. Let's escape into the world of art here by the ocean. Paint Art Studio is the ideal spot for all art enthusiasts who are interested in taking home a piece of the island via canvas or if you're interested in joining a paint class right here on Shoal Bay Beach. Be sure to put yourself at the top of your to-do list by checking out Bathhouse Self Care which features locally made handcrafted skincare products focusing on eliminating tension and rejuvenating the skin. So Malihana Fest is, I want to say our first, but it's not quite because Summer Festival is a cultural festival, but it's our first cultural festival that also includes the arts on a broader scale. We're hosting it over the weekends and it's a chance for persons to see what Anguilla is like, experience our culture, network with our artists and just have a whole Anguilla experience. So Tranquil Jazz on the Lawn is one of the greatest events I think for Malihana Fest because it's where we get our musicians and it's musicians that you don't typically find highlighted in our culture uh, just because they're on the contemporary side and traditionally you will find Calypso and Soka being a part of our music that's showcased so often. So this is a chance for them to be highlighted. But it's definitely Anguilla's Coachella. It's the event where you get to come and bring your blankets, bring your beach chairs, whatever it is you want and just relax and enjoy. You can walk around, there'll be food on sale, there'll be drinks on sale. The music is gonna be great, the atmosphere is gonna be great. It's a very relaxed yet very hype evening of contemporary music and jazz. We love Shoal Bay Villas. We come here many, many times and we really appreciate the, the warm and friendly people here and that's probably the highlight of our trip is the, the local people are always very friendly and very accommodating. Because of its close proximity to the beach, we can get up in the morning, open our patio door and the beach is right there and off we go. I'm Ricky Hodge from Shoal Bay. I also work at Shoal Bay Villas, so I basically work at home and I'm the guy they call for everything. I'm 
most of our guests is a uh, repeat guest. It's guests that comes yearly. The guests, most of all, say that they like the staff, the scenery, the relaxation. You're directly right on the beach, so you come out of your room, you take a few steps, you're in the seawater. You know, these are a couple of things that the guests like about Shoulder Bay Villas. By now, we are all one family. We all get along so good, we walk hand in hand. You know, um, there's a, a saying, there's no work unless it's teamwork. We have that down pack. Team players. Everyone's out on the beach enjoying themselves, getting their chair, getting their glasses of wine. We love walking on the beach. We spend a lot of time walking on the beach. Not only here at Shoal Bay, but we travel around the island every day and visit the different uh, beaches that are available. It's always a pleasure, you know, to uh, introduce new faces and show them the hospitality. And we do have a good staff, our housekeeping is superb, and we do have a good teamwork. So my favorite part of the job is the job. <laughs> so I love the job. Honestly, this is like another phase of my life. Because we was dating from school, you know, from high school. So when she was planning to go off to college, me, she had a serious, serious debate. She wanted to do tourism, and I wanted to do accounts. So I said, ah, well, I guess I have to build a hotel. So I guess this is the first phase. A lot more to come. <laughs> Genesis is our daughter's name. And being the only girl, she is the princess of the family. So this is her, I'd say, little castle. The true guest experience, I wanted to start right at the gate. And when they reach inside, I want them to feel like they're actually at home. It's the home away from home concept. That's what we want the truly experience of Chateau Genesis to be like. If someone said to me that there's not a lot of shopping in Anguilla, I would say you're not looking hard enough because it's really not hard to find at all. There are great boutiques in Anguilla, both independent boutiques and hotel boutiques. So for example, at Franchipani, I like their Petals boutique. At the new Aurora Anguilla, there's a boutique there that I love. At the Four Seasons, I love their boutique. My number one tip, if you want to shop in a hotel boutique here, we know that they're not inexpensive. So what you do is you time your trip for August when the shops are about to close for the season and everyone's trying to get rid of their inventory. And then you just come in and like a little shopping vacuum, you just suck it all up. The three things that I often tell my guests is um, drive on the left, have fun, and don't run over my goats. Everyone sees the goats everywhere. Where can people go and pet a goat? It's on the Jeremiah Highway, there is a, um, a, a special goat crossing. First thing in the morning, later in the afternoon, before sunset, is a perfect time to get that done. We're going to approach a roundabout pretty shortly. And that's one of the concerns a lot of the drivers have when they come to the island. To deal with that, concentrate on your right. Cars that are coming from your left would have to wait for you. Sing the Beyonce song, to the left, to the left. I don't know. <laughs> that works a lot. That's something I tell my people. So when I go in this roundabout, I'm going to look at the vehicles coming on my right. And then most likely there's nothing. I'm going to just take my time and go straight around. And once I'm in the roundabout, I don't have to look for nobody. Because then once you're in the roundabout, you are right all the time.
know, normally it's people fall in love with the island and then they come to my office. They come to Anguilla, they stay at the resort, they go to Sunset Lounge for a night and they quickly find themselves asking, what do we have to offer here? So we have many options. If I was gonna say one thing, it's people are taken back as soon as they arrive here. They see how beautiful this place is, and then they sit down and they wanna know what, what options we have available. There's a bunch of ways you can find out. I have a desk directly next to concierge. Also, we have our residence sales villa, Villa 20, so if you're not on resort, feel free to come by. And I suggest you walk down the beach, maybe have a little bit of lunch at Bamboo. I come grab you at Bamboo, take you in the golf cart and give you a full tour of the property itself and all the different residences and really accommodate you around your vacation needs. Because you're in Anguilla, doing all the things that we love about this place and this island. Walk down that magnificent marble hallway that we have here. You'll just fall in love and this is where, where the dream ends. My name is Fiona Curtis and I work with Council Limited. I have done 15 years and Council Limited provides corporate services. Council began as an accounting firm and actually moved to become corporate services because they're so intimately connected. What we also do is we provide administrative support. If you need help getting business licenses, knowing what taxes you need to pay, the upcoming GST, anything you need, we help you. If somebody wants to set up a business in Anguilla, please just contact us, make an appointment, come in and see me, and we can just talk about what you would like to get done. When I first saw the land and knowing, you know, the central location in West End, where most people want to be in the West End, I was, I was so excited going to look at the land and finally buying the land. It was, it was a big thing for me. And especially after we cleared the land and really saw this unbelievable view. Um, yeah, absolutely slam dunk. So Cocoon Villas is a small development close to Meads Bay here in Angola. Uh, it's going to consist of six uh, villas, each around 2,500 square foot. Um, they're all going to be solar powered, fully solar powered. Each one is going to have its own pool and um, it's going to be a beautiful little development. We're 90 seconds away from one of the most beautiful beaches in the world, which is Meads Bay. We are two minutes away from Four Seasons uh, Hotel and uh, we're in a good spot. I'm so lucky that I have been working with the best architects on this island for many, many years, uh, which is Carl Richards from Richards Architecture and Raul Ventipool from V Architecture. Both of them are born and bred in Angola and lately as a, as a power couple, they themselves have taken off and done a lot of great, great projects in Angola. I've been working in this industry since 1990. I've worked with Bonnie and Ira on several projects like Kamik and Villas. It was a lot of fun working with them and it's a pleasure now coming together again. My wife Debbie and I named our company Trophy Properties because that is what we love to sell and it's our area of expertise. To qualify as a trophy property, the real estate must be unique, priced in excess of $1 million, ideally located and be very desirable to people with resources looking for a luxury home or a very special piece of land. 
Anguilla is a luxury destination and has many trophy properties, and we're proud to say that we have represented some of the best of them, including the Santosha Estate, Long Bay Villas Sea, Sky and Sand, the incredible Rendezvous Bay Beachfront Homes Arushi and Animos, and most recently the Villa Paradise Estate and Savannah Bay Beach Development Site. We've been coming here for 35 years. We've been to other islands you know, in the Caribbean. We seem to keep coming back to Anguilla. I made the connection with Steve. Speaking for myself, it was the right decision. You know, I really appreciated his enthusiasm and, uh, and how professional he was. I started off singing when I was 12 years old. I did a lot of records with other artists back home. I helped people produce their records, I helped people write their albums. When I came to Anguilla, I stayed a few years, maybe like eight years without doing any music. Coming to Anguilla and not doing any music at all was a little bit depressing for me because all I knew for a while, for, for, for years, was music. I was just doing the construction thing, the teaching thing, because I was a teacher for a while. And when I get back into music 2013, I decided I was gonna really put my best foot forward and bring that energy that I had back home. The fact that I was able to write my own stuff again and come up with all new inspiration kind of made me feel like, you know what, you really elevated from where you started up in Dominica to now. So the new album, I just wanted to create something that was more Afrobeat type. But I threw a few ballads on there for the people who love slow ballads and a few pop songs on there for people who love pop. My, my plan is just to put out music and let the universe do a thing, you know. I don't want to get in the way of anything. Just put it out and if it fly, it fly. What it's meant to be will be, you know. But I just have the hope in my heart that something good comes out of it. Yeah. <laughs> we rock and We have a few things going on at the Angular Music Academy and a few things that we're inspiring to, to get to. Um, again, we always try to push the envelope and get to a bigger vision. So uh, as of now, we have the AMA classroom, which is the classroom we teach our production and engineering. We have the AMA hall, which is uh, basically like a cocktail, sort of wedding reception, small performance kind of a space, um, maybe 60 year old parties as well. And then we have the, the Grammy Museum Gallery. And then we have the lovely, you know, the AMA recording, uh, which is this beautiful facility that I'm sitting in right now. And um, in the near future, we'll, you know, try to add um, some more elements, which is a computer coding space. I'm going to call it a tech classroom, green screen animation space, and then um, some other ideas that are still floating in my head. Say our number one goal in mind was to give the locals the opportunity to create at the highest level. Um, but we realized that with that would come, you know, some, some overhead. And so we, we also created the space in mind for, you know, everybody that wants to use the space. You know, whether it be the Drakes or the Beyonce's or the Rihanna's or, or whether it's the guy from St. Martin or St. Lucia or anywhere in the world who wants to record, you know, in a lovely, beautiful environment and then go to the beach and get some sun. I think Anguilla makes the perfect backdrop for wedding photos because Anguilla is in the heart of the Caribbean. I mean, most people are acquainted with the Caribbean and we are known for our gorgeous beaches and picturesque scenes. Here in Anguilla, we have many different services that are provided for weddings. We have, of course, photography, video, 
Uh, you can have even dancers at your wedding. Um, we also have live entertainment. We have bands, we have great singers. We have hair and makeup artists, event planners. We have florists, decor, um, you name it. They can provide you with whatever you need for your wedding event. Your wedding vendor will be dedicated to the task and I can assure you they will put a smile on your face and we can't wait to have you here in Anguilla. K-Sharp Media loves to spend time together. Um, outside of, of work, we actually hang out. We, we see ourselves as a family. So it's not just uh, show up at work and come and get the job done. We actually enjoy each other's company. So we hang out outside of work. I personally don't have one favorite place that I enjoy taking photos or, or making videos, but there are so many uh, great spots in Anguilla. I think um, I enjoy the West End at the Arch and on any one of the gorgeous beaches, uh, you definitely will have a great backdrop for your wedding event or whatever the occasion might be. You've heard it many times, but what really makes Anguilla Anguilla is the people. So you can uh, be sure that whoever you get to cover your wedding, they will make it an enjoyable and memorable experience.